Hello everyone. This is case two of the panoramic interpretation. In this video, let's learn about the radiographic features of tonsillar calcifications. Before you start interpreting a panoramic radiograph, evaluate if the patient positioning is correct. A panoramic radiograph can have many kinds of positioning errors. You should look at the occlusal plane. In this radiograph, the smile is more prominent. This means that the chin is down. One additional finding for the chin down position is loss of detail of the mandibular anterior roots. In addition, look at the distal margin of the ramus. The distal borders of the RMI should be tipped towards the back of the radiographic image. In this radiograph, the distal border of the RMI are inclined towards the center of the image. This inclination of the ramus is another sign that the chin is down. On this radiograph, we see multiple radio opacities superimposed over the rami. Some of these are superimposed over the oropharyngeal airway. The condyles are flat. We'll talk about the TMJs on a different video. If you are interested, please look for an hour long video on TMJ that I had posted earlier. I have another radiograph of this patient taken a few years later. The patient positioning is worse on this radiograph. The chin is down. The narrow anterior teeth means that the patient is too far forward. We also see that the dorsum of the tongue is not in contact with the hard palate. Again, we see multiple radio opacities on both sides. These are superimposed over the rami. These are separate, discrete, not grouped together. Let's review the tonsillar calcifications. The location is critical for diagnosis. The tonsillar calcification can be seen superimposed over the ramus on a panoramic radiograph. Some of these calcifications are located distal to the ramus. We'll review a CBCT scan. On the CBCT scan, we'll see that the calcifications are on the lingual aspect of the ramus. Tonsillar calcifications are multiple, small, and they are irregular in size and shape. These calcifications are discrete, they are not grouped together. The calcifications are typically seen in elderly people. Here is another radiograph of a patient with tonsillar calcifications. As you can see, there are multiple radio opacities of various sizes superimposed over the rami on the both sides. These are not grouped together. We have another radio opacity in the premolar region. This radio opacity does not fit the location of tonsillar calcification, which should be superimposed over the rami. This radio opacity near the apex of the premolar is idiopathic osteosclerosis, also known as dense bone island. This is not a calcification in the soft tissues. We have another panoramic radiograph. We see multiple radio opacities, tonsillar calcifications, bilaterally, more pronounced on the left side. Some of these calcifications are superimposed over the distal margin of the ramus, and some are on the pharyngeal soft tissues. Because these calcifications are in the soft tissues, they do not have to be superimposed over the ramus. As you can see, some of these calcifications are larger than the others. On this radiograph, again, we see bilateral calcifications. This time the calcifications are larger on the right side. The patient is partially edentulous, about 65 years old. Now let's review a CBCT scan to appreciate the relationship of the tonsillar calcifications with the ramus. I'm using on-demand 3D software to see this patient. This is coronal view. This is sagittal and this is axial. Let me make this image larger so that we can see the features better. Currently, I'm in the molar region. So if I scroll back, scrolling towards the ramus, so this is vertical ramus. As I go further back, you will start to see the calcification. And here is one. This is the buccal cortical plate of the ramus. And that's the lingual cortical plate. And this radio opacity is on the lingual aspect of the ramus. Further distally, you will see multiple radio opacities on both sides. So now we are picking up more and more calcifications. These are multiple radio opacities on the outer aspect of the pharyngeal walls. Let's look at the axial slices. 
and on the axial again we'll see the multiple radio opacities so these are the radio opacities on the lingual aspect of both the ramus multiple grouped together So similarly, we saw these radio opacities superimposed over the ramus bilaterally. The differential diagnosis of tonsillar calcification includes cellulite of the parotid glands. A cellulite of parotid gland is rare, while tonsillar calcifications are common. Also, tonsillar calcifications are multiple superimposed over the ramus and oropharyngeal soft tissues. Parotid calcification, if happens, would be superiorly located. Lymph node calcifications are usually near the angle of the mandible. These lymph calcifications are grouped together, not like discrete separate radio opacities of tonsillar calcifications. If we have a single tonsillar radio opacity superimposed over the ramus, it may appear as a dense bone island. Tonsillar calcifications may not require any treatment. If it is large and the patient has difficulty swallowing, it may require surgical removal. Occasionally, large tonsillar calcification may dislodge and be aspirated to the lungs, causing pneumonia. That's about it on tonsillar calcification. Xie Xie, thank you. Please join me on a different panoramic radiographic interpretation video. See you soon.